The flavor of gyokuro can be difficult to explain to people, so we thought we'd make a whole video about it. In this video, you'll learn what does gyokuro tea taste like and why is it able to develop such a distinct flavor profile. You'll see how much work goes into producing this unique gyokuro tea taste that has become famous all around the world. Before we get started, it would really mean a lot to us if you could subscribe to our YouTube channel and stay tuned for future tea videos. We have hundreds of videos on all sorts of topics related to Japanese green tea, but for this episode, we're going to focus on gyokuro specifically. Without further ado, let's get started. So what does gyokuro tea taste like? The gyokuro taste is very unique in the world of tea. When people ask us what does gyokuro tea taste like, the first things that come to mind are actually foods rather than other drinks. The savory or umami flavor gyokuro is known for is something more common in Japanese cuisine than it is in the world of tea. The closest comparison for explaining the gyokuro tea taste is something like a bowl of miso soup. You get the rich, thick mouthfeel from the miso paste, the savory flavor from the tofu and mushrooms, a hint of salt, and these marine or vegetal flavor profiles from the seaweed. This may sound like a lot to take in, particularly with a simple cup of tea, but the gyokuro tea taste is something tea lovers all around the world have fallen in love with. Once you develop a taste for gyokuro, there is no turning back. What creates this gyokuro tea taste? The unique taste of gyokuro tea comes from the long and labor-intensive production process. First, the tea plants need to be covered with a special type of netting called a kabuse to block them from the sun. When the tea plant is exposed to sunlight, it begins to convert theanine into catechins. Catechins can protect the tea leaf from the UV light, but they can also produce a bitter flavor in the final tea. In order to minimize the production of catechins and maximize the content of sweet and savory theanine, the tea plant needs to be covered in order to block it from the sun. After the tea leaves have been shaded for three weeks, they are ready to be harvested. The farmer will only select the top three leaves of the tea plant, as these are thought to be the sweetest and smoothest in flavor. They are also the most nutrient-dense part of the tea plant. After the leaves are harvested, they need to be steamed. This deactivates the enzymes that cause oxidation and prevent the tea from turning into a black tea. The steaming process locks in these marine or seaweed notes from the gyokuro tea. After the leaves are steamed, they are partially dried and then rolled. The tea leaves need to be slightly pliable when they are rolled, and with the case of gyokuro, they are actually taken through an additional rolling phase, which takes place in a special machine. This is how gyokuro tea is able to develop its distinct pine needle shape. Once the tea leaves have taken on their final shape, they are dried one last time to create finished gyokuro tea. Is there any tea that tastes similar to gyokuro? There is really no other teas that can replicate the gyokuro taste. The closest you may get is with a long shaded sencha like a kabuse sencha. Kabuse sencha is made from tea plants that have been shaded for 10 days or more. As you know, to be considered a gyokuro tea plant, it needs to be shaded for 21 days or more. This means that kabuse sencha falls in between 10 and 20 days of shading. Compared to the gyokuro taste, the taste of kabuse sencha is much lighter. It does replicate the sweetness of gyokuro, but without this strong umami or brothy flavor. This may be a positive for some people who have really not quite developed the gyokuro tea taste. If you're a fan of these strong, savory, or umami flavors, you really need that extra two weeks of shading in order to get it. The caffeine will also be higher in gyokuro compared to kabuse sencha. Can you get the gyokuro tea taste without the shading? There is a tea plant variety that is known for having a natural gyokuro taste. This cultivar is called the asatsuyu and it's used to make sweeter sencha teas. Even though the kasuga-en asatsuyu sencha is not a long shaded tea, it does have a really pleasant sweetness to it that is akin to the gyokuro taste. This tea is made using the deep steaming method, where the tea leaves are steamed for an additional 30 seconds or so. During the longer steaming process of the kasuga and asatsuyu, the tea leaves are broken down, allowing more of them to flow into the cup and create this cloudy green color and rich, vibrant flavor. What are some reasons your gyokuro tastes bitter? Some people have told us that gyokuro tastes bitter, and there is one main reason for this. Gyokuro tea can be extremely sensitive to temperature, and if you brew it too hot, you will end up with a very bitter tea. This makes it very important to follow the brewing parameters for each tea, particularly the temperature. To brew a cup of gyokuro tea, we recommend you use 5 grams of tea leaves, 150 milliliters of water, a temperature of 140 degrees Fahrenheit, and a brewing time of 2 minutes. The reason you need a longer brewing time is that gyokuro tea is rolled more tightly into these needle shapes, and these leaves need a full 2 minutes to open up and release their flavor into the water. The gyokuro taste is certainly an acquired one, but once you get it, nothing else will come close to satisfying it. Gyokuro has a heavy and thick mouthfeel with a rich savory flavor and a smooth finish. It also has plenty of sweetness to it. It's rare to find a drink that has the complexity and nuance of a full meal, but Gyokuro seems to pull it off beautifully. 
If you're looking to try some gyokuro tea for yourself, you can try some from the legendary farmer, Mr. Sakamoto. Mr. Sakamoto has been growing tea without the use of pesticides or chemicals since 1985, and during that time, he has developed his own blend of organic fertilizer. With this more natural fertilizer, he is able to grow strong, healthy, and flavorful tea plants without harming the local ecosystem. After traveling around Japan for the past few years, we've met with dozens of farmers and sampled many different gyokuro teas. The best teas we have found are the Gyokuro Cha Musume, the Gyokuro Sasahime, Gyokuro Cha Meijin, and the Gyokuro Wakamusha. All of these are from Mr. Sakamoto. The Cha Musume, for example, is the beginner's Gyokuro from the Yabukita cultivar. It has a strong and direct savory flavor, complemented by some pleasant floral notes. The Cha Meijin is the master's Gyokuro. It has a much lighter and sweeter flavor with notes of caramel and brown sugar. Whatever gyokuro you decide on, I'm sure it will change the way you look at tea forever. When you order tea from us, you're not only helping to support this channel, but also helping us to support the dozens of talented farmers we work with all around Japan. We hope that by sharing these farmers' stories and their teas with people all around the world, we can help to transition the tea industry into a more positive, sustainable direction. Thank you all so much for watching, and if you have any questions about green tea, please feel free to leave them in the comments below. Until then, we'll see you next time.